I wanted to give a little recap of my experience with my hysteroscopic polypectomy. What? Thanks for clicking on Simply Tanika. I am Tanika. If you are new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. Let's hang out a while. If you are returning, welcome back. Let's get those babies, ladies. I see the crystal raindrops fall and the beauty. What's up, Fertility Fam? How are you? I hope you are well. I wanted to give a little recap of my experience with my hysteroscopic polypectomy. <laughs> so, as you know, I had that procedure last Friday. Let's take a look. Good morning, Fertility Fam. How are you? Today is Friday, September 21st. I'm all dressed and getting ready to go down for my procedure. Uh, a little nervous about being put to sleep, but hopefully all will be well. Uh, I'll be under for about an hour. I have on my lovely shirt. Thanks, girl. Um, so yeah, it is 8.45. I have to check in by 9.30, so we are packing up and heading out. Talk to you later. Hope your Friday's going well. Bye. So I'm all ready to go. Uh, they wouldn't let Blue come back, but they said I'd be done in like 45 minutes to an hour, so I can't be too bad, right? All right, ladies, so I have filled up my paperwork and now I'm just coloring in my conception book. And I'm waiting for the anesthesiologist. I'm getting nervous though. The coloring book helps, but I'm still nervous. All right, I'm all done. I um, just had two packs of graham crackers and some water. Totally broke my own fast and my diet for the day. But Well, not the diet. My calories are okay, but the sugar and the carbs. I probably need it for the anesthesia to metabolize, but all done. eating more crackers. I had to go to the restroom um, and I'm getting more crackers and water and then they're gonna get blue and then I think I get to go home. All right, so the doctor just left and said um, that, that she's not sure if it was a polyp, there were some abnormalities, so all that's been removed. It's gonna go to the lab, they're gonna test it. If it's abnormal, I'll hear back in a week. And if it's normal, we just move on with life. So I think that's our last hurdle before egg retrieval. Um, We'll do FSH on cycle day two for the next cycle, and assuming, claiming that that comes back normal, we will um, be on the road. So, actually, I take that back. Next step, cycle day 21, testing. Confirming ovulation, progesterone, and that day, if everything comes back normal, I'll start the estrogen priming to prep for cycle day two. So that should help ensure that FSH is low at that point. So on the road, now I just get to rest. I'm super hungry because I haven't had a lot of water. Um, so I've eaten like six packs of graham crackers, which is crazy. So today's gonna be my cheat day, but there are worse things. <laughs> so that was my day. Um, I slept afterwards and I did not remember getting from the surgical room into my patient room or whatever you call it afterwards. So I did ask about it and they're like, oh no, you stood up and the doctors helped you. And I was like, okay, well, anyway, what was that? What is a hysteroscopic polypectomy? Well, I will tell you, I looked it up. I want to give you the facts and just the facts, ma'am. Um, and why did I need to be put to sleep? I got that question a lot. So I will, let me just get this open. The hist hysteroscopy, 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 hystero, 
You say that three times fast. Anyway, it's a visual examination of the cervix and interior of the uterus with an endoscope. So that is what they use to get into my uterus. And they went in through my cervix, um, very much what they've done, like when I had an IUI, or if you have, when I had my SH, uh, HSG and the SHG, they opened up my cervix, stuck something in there, took a look around. So that's what that was. And then what is a polyp is the other question I got from some folks who are new to the fertility. So, and this is what I found on the web for you all. So, I found that on the web, and basically that means that there's a polyp in the uterus, and you can see here, um, there, here's the uterus, here's the lining, which is the endometrium, or uterine lining, and there is a polyp. And so that is what I had, they removed that, and while the doctor was in there, she said, as I mentioned, that she um, cleaned some things up and they sent it off to the lab. So yeah, the doctor went in and removed the polyp and some other things, some cleaning while she was in there, and they took all that and put it in a bag and sent it off to the lab. And I'll hear back in a week or so if anything was cancerous or not. If, if it's benign, I shouldn't hear anything from them. Why did they remove it? It could affect implantation, right? So once I have my egg retrieval and then the eggs are introduced to sperm and fertilize and all that fun stuff, they put them back in my uterus and we have to wait and make sure that they attach, that they implant and start to grow. Implantation is actually a three month period. It's that first trimester, which is why if some women are taking progesterone, they have them take it through the whole first trimester trimester that whole period is implantation but i think a lot of the times when we talk about and are going to conceive journeys is that immediate latching of it and so we say implantation implantation bleeding we mean in the very early days technically implantation lasts for those first 13 weeks of pregnancy so if they implanted or if they placed the embryo back into my uterus on top of this polyp it's possible that that polyp that you know, a little, it's like a skin tag basically. It, hanging in there could keep the embryo from implanting and so they wanted to remove that. And then they also wanted to look around just at the surface of my uterus um, while they were in there. So even though I had the SHG where they can see kind of the uterus, they can't see it exactly until they get in there with the endoscope, uh, which is why before, and when I joked about the doctor said, we'll look around while we're in there, I mean, I joke because I just felt like an old jalopy, like you're going to look around, you're going to kick the tires. What does that mean? But they are legitimately looking around to see if there are any other abnormalities, adhesions, anything that they didn't see while they were doing the SHG that could impact implantation. We don't want that to be impacted, right? So yeah, that was that. They put me to sleep because there's cutting and bleeding and all of those other fun things that are going on. So. Even though they didn't cut me to get access to my uterus, they did make cuts while they were in my uterus, and so they didn't want me awake for that. Afterwards, I did experience cramping. I would say by the time I was sitting down on the subway, and I don't know if it was, you know, while we walked over, I don't remember exactly, but I do, I remember it being very pronounced once I got on the subway that I was having cramping feeling, and they said that I would have blood flow that would be like a light period. Um, I think I had it probably for two days very very light mostly um when i had a bowel movement tmi when i pushed i noticed it but i slept most of that day on friday and then saturday i slept and sunday blue and i did go out for a walk it wasn't anything strenuous there were no like inclines it was very flat over in fort Tryon in new york so it was nice it was nice to get out oh and over by the marina um so we walked along the hudson that was it was nice the weather was great fall is definitely here it was nice and crisp not too humid um and so it was good to get out and walk around i didn't feel any cramping or pain then the day of the procedure i probably had about four tylenol when i got back and a lot of water and um 
I ate kind of intermittently. I for that day, like after I had the graham crackers in the morning after the surgery, I decided not to do fasting for the rest of the day and just kind of take it easy and be good to myself. So yeah, that was it. And then I got the results back, um, which you guys will see that next week, but I did get the results back. There are, um, it wasn't cancerous. Um, yeah. So that was it. It was it was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I would say I was glad that Blue went. Um, I wish they would have let him back in the room, but I guess, you know, policy or whatnot. He was able to come back after I was done with surgery, but not before. They had me take the pregnancy test ahead of time just to see if, you know, I was pregnant. You guys heard that. Um, call with the nurse if you didn't hear it i'll link it over here um but yeah she, they they had a situation where there was a woman who was pregnant and they had to run in and like no so as a matter of uh, protocol they have people take the pregnancy test which makes sense it makes sense uh yeah so it was pretty straightforward a little nerve-wracking going into it i worked out that morning to help you know with the nerves and like i said the drinking was the the hardest part or to be specific than not drinking of water so yeah that's kind of what our next steps are hopefully that makes sense and um i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for coming along with me to the doctor's office and seeing me through my surgery i appreciate you please share this video there are a lot of women who are going through this process who need guidance assistance reference i certainly searched a lot of videos um in the run-up to my own procedure so please share it with everybody that you know and uh, i will see you later bye mm -hmm. baby that's to you all no raindrops fall and the beauty of it all is when the sun comes shining through to make those rainbows in my mind when